Hello, my name is Ken Root. I'm the owner of Branches to Bowls Limited. I carry the Vicmark machinery line of lathes and their full range of accessories. I also represent Carter & Son Toolworks premium turning tools and also the phenomenal Clearview Cyclone desk collectors. Today we're going to do an introduction on the brand new Vicmark VL150 V2, the second version. Just released 2020. This one arrived in my shop yesterday. This is the VL150 V2. You can see that it is now a solid cast lathe, right from the stand to the top. What we did yesterday is we brought this in, mounted the lathe on the stand, and then with the adjustable floor bolts, we have locked this to the floor so it is rock solid right now. I did raise the legs to the top to give me a little bit more comfort in turning. It comes from the factory with a light grease to protect it from rust. So what I do is I clean this with WD-40 and then I coat the surfaces with a light spray of blade coat. I spray this on, let it sit for a couple minutes and then wipe it clean. When the lathe comes in, this is basically the way the headstock is set up. Your tailstock is up against here. There is a little bushing in between to protect the two. Tailstock is locked down. Uh, banjo is locked down with the tool rest. Tailstock is locked down. The inverter is wrapped in cardboard and strapped to the top of the lathe so it cannot move. When you get ready to go, what you're going to want to do is select your belt speed. This came in with the belt on the fast speed and I know on my other lathe, I prefer to run it in the second position. So I'm just going to open this door. There is a, a handle here, a little bit hard to get at, but you can. And that will loosen the tension or unlock the belt pulley so that you can move the belt. And then on the back, there is a little lever that you can use to lift the belt or lift the motor so that you can change your belt. We change the belt over to the second position then you push it down leave about half an inch of play in the belt and then lock it tight. It is a tight reach but if I can get it in there anybody can. We put the do door back on. There is also a locking screw here to hold the door tight in shipping. I have removed that for now. And then also behind us is the belt access at the top. And it's a hinge door and there's your pulley and the belt mounted on the second position. I'll put this back on. This also has a locking screw just to hold it secure in shipping. At this point you can take your inverter. It has the two slot holes on here and that just mounts right there and you kind of got to see in the middle of nowhere and then lock that down. This makes it very accessible, easy to get at and you have access to your start button, your stop button, your variable speed, and if you lift the cover, 
there's your reverse button. It has a cover on so that you don't accidentally bump it and go the other direction. The inverter takes the 220 volt power, converts it to three phase, because the motor is a one horse, three phase motor. It also controls the start, stop, reverse. That's all controlled through the inverter. It also controls your soft start and your electronic brake on the motor. It also has your overcurrent protection, your overload protection, all of your electrical protection and controls are in this inverter. The inverter is made by Fuji and we all know the name Fuji so it's a quality piece of electronics. What we have done is we've added the 250 mill millimeter bed extension. This gives you a longer reach on your lathe. It also gives you a place to park the tailstock. This one is 250 millimeters or about nine and three quarter inches. There is also an option available for a 500 millimeter bed extension, which gives you about 19 and a half inches of extra length. You can also bolt multiple ones together. The tailstock is bolted on. There's two bolts with the bushings. You bring it up and get it finger tight. Then you park the tailstock dead center over the, the seam, clamp it down, tighten the bolts up tight, and that lines your tool rest up or tailstock up so your tool tailstock slides back and forth. There are a number of accessories that come in the bag with the owner's manuals. One of them is a collar, safety collar. And what that is for, when you mount that on your headstock, between the headstock and the chuck or the faceplate, uh, there's a couple other accessories that use that as well. If you're doing any reverse turning, this will secure the faceplate or the chuck on so it cannot unthread itself makes it a much safer piece of equipment to use. A couple other things that come in the bag is your knockout bar. It fits in the tailstock or the headstock to take out the live center, the drive dog. The other piece that comes with it in the bag is your wrench and that fits on your faceplate. Uh, there's also a couple other pieces that the eccentric chuck, some other pieces that do need the wrench to take it off as well. This comes with the lathe. The other thing you need is, now you can dress the part, it comes with your own Vicmar hat. Okay, when the lathe comes in, mount it on the lathe, your banjo and then your six inch tool rest. I'm going to back this up a little bit. In the tailstock you have the heavy duty live center and you just tap that out. And then also it comes with the faceplate and the drive dog. We need to knock the drive dog out first and then I just had this on very light so I didn't need to use the wrench. And this lathe comes with a 1x8 thread for the one inch by eight spindle thread. Also available is an M33, but I would have to order that because I only bring in the one by eight. Seems to be the most popular for the size of a lathe. Couple of the things that Vicmark does when they build these lathes that makes them a little bit unique. The headstock spindle runs on tapered bearings. If you're familiar with tapered bearings, you'll know what that means. But if you're not familiar with it, think of your car, your front axle, back axle as well, but your front axle is sitting on tapered bearings to run smooth. You can hit a pothole, knock your whole alignment out, car out of alignment, however your tire is still centered on your axle. That's what tapered bearings do. There is also an indexing pin, 24 position indexing pin to lock your headstock. That is for mounting your face plates and your chucks. And also if you're doing indexing work on your lathe, you've got 24 separate points that are very handy. The other thing that Vicmark does is the headstock and the tailstock are machined together. If you look down on the end of the bed, there is a number three 
And if I slide the tailstock off, turn it over, there's a matching three. So this tailstock is built for this headstock. Now I'm going to put it back on so I don't drop it. The right now, and this is the way it comes, the handle is on the other side of the lathe. You just reach over and open and close it. But you can easily switch it over. There's a small snap ring here. Under the snap ring, pull the handle out, slide it back in, make sure you catch the, the plate underneath, and you can then put the handle on the other side. Your The quill is indexed, something I forgot to clean. And this runs out to 60 millimeters, and you can see where you're at. Okay, so now we're going to plug this in. You can hear it run quiet when it's empty. And then we will mount a piece of wood and a chuck and make a bowl. Okay, we have just plugged the power on, turned the, and you'll see that the inverter comes up with a number. What this is, is the motor speed. Now because we have put the belt on the second speed, this is going to be about a third too high. So on the second speed, this would actually be a spindle speed of about 230 RPM. If we went to the slow speed belt position, you would look at 150 RPM. And that number comes up when you plug the machine in. You can turn this up and you can see if I turn it up to there, my start speed would be 1265 or about 800, 820 RPM in the second speed. Okay, it's a good idea when you shut the lathe off or before you restart it, turn the speed down when you're putting a new piece of wood on. That way you know you, you'll have a safe start. Turn it on. That's the sound of it running at about 100 130 RPM. We'll turn it up. That's reading about 2000 on the meter. And there's up the top, it's running at about 3000, so that's the motor speed, the spindle speed will be about 2000 RPM right now. You can see how smooth the water is sitting there. There's no vibration on the top. And then it slows right down. And shut it off. Okay, now I'm going to turn a smaller piece of silver walnut. I have already pre-drilled the hole. I'm going to use a Vicmark 100 chuck couple of things on the Vicmark chuck. It has a dust cover. It keeps the dust and the grime out of the inside so you have a smooth easy movement. This one also is a direct thread so it will fit onto here without using an insert. There is also a direct thread for an M33 on the 100 also a one and a quarter by eight so you can use this one on all three lathes. The other thing Vicmark does with their jaws is they they make the jaws in one piece. They're dovetail jaws. You have no grooves. You get a solid connection. You have an Allen T wrench to open and close it. And the VM100 has a 4.5 to a 1 ratio clamping ratio. So you get an in incredible hold on the piece of wood. To mount it, what I do is I leave, undo the indexing pin and I spin this in. When I get close, I take and I spin it to lock it on, give you a solid connection. You can also give it a light tap. You don't want to put this too hard or it's going to be hard to get off. This is the wood screw that fit worm screw that fits in. Now I will mount this inside. 
Pull this up tight, and then I lock that on. And I just give it a little tap on each side. Undo the lock indexing pin so you can spin. That's a small cap. And then I thread this in. Now at some point this is going to get fairly hard to hold, so then I will lock the indexing pin as well. Because you do want a good solid joint. There I've locked the spindle. Now I can just twist this until it comes up tight. For the most part your worm screw holds a piece of wood so it doesn't fall off. Fall off. Your most of your holding power when you're using the wood screw is the face of the jaws. That's where you get the friction. Okay, then we bring the tool rest up, lock it down, and you spin this by hand first to make sure that you're not going to run into the tool rest. I'm going to lower this a little bit so I'm more in the I think that's about the center. I will turn and put a jacket on. This is our branches to bowls turning smock. It's made out of lightweight ripstop nylon, so it's a strong, strong fabric. The dust does not settle in the jacket. You've got a pocket, the logo's on the pocket, and you also have a two slot pencil holder on your left sleeve with the velcro bottom so you can get rid of the sawdust. What we found is the dust does not stick to this jacket and in the back there are two pockets as well. One of the main safety features is always wear a face mask when you're turning wood because if you have a piece off that flies and hits you in the face at least you don't have a hole in your face. I put on a glove on my turning hand that is one size too small so it fits very very snug and the reason for this is when you're turning wood with a bowl gouge the end gets hot and this helps keep your hand too cool. I will be using a Carter & Son 5 8 inch bowl gouge and these are made out of M42 steel on the tool a five step heat treating process for the complete tool the gullet or the flute in here is dirty but when they're made they're polished. You have no milling marks on the inside that you have to get rid of when you do your sharpening. The handle is an aircraft grade aluminum. The tool is held into the handle with two set screws and it is a round three inch tang which gives you a very very solid tool. There's my clean shop coat. Just shake the dust loose and away it goes. Well, I hope you enjoyed that short demonstration, a bit of a walkthrough through the lathe, a little bit of turning a bowl and the performance of the lathe itself. This is the VL150 V2, solid cast iron construction. If you want more information from me, 
You can reach me at website wwwbranches 2 bowls and my email is ken, K-E-N, at branches2bowls.com and my phone number is 403-830-3049. Thank you for watching.